So we're going to talk about what is a matrix. We have four numbers here, but what are these numbers telling us? Well, I think the best way to think about a matrix is in terms of inputs and outputs. The columns of the matrix are telling us what inputs we're looking at. And the rows are telling us the outputs. So for example, if we want to look at the first column, second row, this three right here, what this three is saying is that for every x input, we're going to get a y output of three. For example, if we want to multiply this matrix by the vector one, zero, so we're just looking at an x input. We know for every x input, we're going to get a y output of three. So whatever our result vector is, the y value of this vector is going to be 3, because the y output for every x input is going to be 3. If we want to look at a different vector, say this time we're looking at 0, 1. So this time, we're only getting a 1 y input. So this time, when we look at the matrix, we're going to look at our y inputs, which are the second column. And then we ask, what's the y output for every y input? That's this number right here, which is 2. So if we multiply this matrix by 0, 1, we're going to look at the y input and the y output is going to be 2. So the y value of this vector is going to be 2. The x value is going to be the x output, which is the first row. That's going to be 5. So this 0, 1 is going to put us at the vector 5, 2. And we can think about this in terms of a coordinate plane. If we look at the vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1, in the coordinate plane. And think about what happens if we apply this matrix. Well, we know that 0, 1 is going to get moved to the new spot of 5, 2. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2 up. We're going to end up right here. And the vector 1, 0, if we switch these around, is going to put us somewhere else. It's going to put us at 1 for the x output and 3 for the y output. So our vector here is going to be 1, 3. And if we look at that, it's going to get moved right here on the coordinate plane. So in fact, when we look at this matrix 1, 5, 3, 2, we can think about each of the columns as being the vector output that we get for each input. So for example, for an x input of 1, we're going to get the vector output of 1, 3, which is just the first column of the matrix is this vector here. If we put in a y input, we're going to get a vector output of 5, 2, which is this brown vector right here. And the question is, what if instead of just having x inputs or just having y inputs, we have both? So if we have 1, 1 as our input, what is our output going to be? Well, we can figure out what the outputs for each of these inputs separately is going to give us. So for example, for the x input, we know that our output is going to be 1, 3. And we know that for the y input, our output is going to be 5, 2. And if we're looking at both of these together, all that we have to do is put these two outputs that we have together. So we're going to add them up. And that's going to give us the result of 6, 5. And in fact, this corresponds to, if we take our coordinate plane here, and we add the two vectors tip to tail. So we have our vector 5, 2 right here. If we take 1, 3 and add it, 2, 5, 2, just like that, we're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 as our x value, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 as our y value. So we've been looking at some basic vector inputs so far, but what if we get something a little more complicated? Say instead of 1, 1, we want to look at multiplying this matrix by 4, negative 6. What are we going to get? Well, we know that for every x input of 1, we're going to get an x output of 1. But this time, we have an x input of 4. So what's our x output going to be? It's going to be 4, which we just get by doing 1 times 4. Now we look at the y input. We know that for every y input of 1, we're going to get an x output of 5. So if our y input is negative 6, then this time, our y output is going to be 5 times negative 6. And of course, we add these two together to get our final answer. We can do the same thing for the y's. If you look at the x input, we have a y output of 3, and then we have 4 x inputs. So we do 3 times 4. Then we add our y output per y input is 2. 
and then we have negative six y inputs. So times negative six, add those up, our result is going to be negative 24, 0. So that is how you multiply any matrix by any vector. Now, when I learned about matrix vector multiplication in algebra class, I was told, OK, in order to find the x value of your result, you do this times this plus this times this, and add that up, that's your answer. And then for the y value, you do this times this plus this times this, add that up, that's your answer. And it doesn't really make any sense when you learn it that way. But what we're really saying when we do that process is we're saying, OK, for the x value of our result, we're looking at what is the x output per x input and how much x input are we getting? What is the x output per y input and how much y input are we getting? We add those two together, that's going to be our final x value. So that is how this process of multiplication works. We're just looking at what are the inputs and what are the outputs per input. That's what our matrix is telling us. So we've talked about matrix vector multiplication, but there's one thing you might be wondering, which is, what if we do, instead of a matrix times a vector, a matrix times a matrix? So we have 4, negative 6, and then we add a second column of 1, 1. Well, remember when we talked about this matrix in the coordinate plane, we said that an x input of 1, 0 gets mapped to 1, 3, right here. And what that's saying is this column vector of 1, 3 is what we're mapping the x input to. So in fact, we can think about this matrix here in terms of vectors. We can say this matrix is really just two different vectors that we smush together into a giant matrix. So when we multiply these two matrices together, all we have to do is multiply the vectors separately and then put them next to each other. So the result that we got from multiplying this matrix by 4, negative 6 was negative 24, 0. And then for 1, 1, our answer was 6, 5. So that's all we have to do to get our final matrix. We split this matrix up into two vectors, do the process twice, put them together, that's our final answer. And of course, everything here applies in three dimensions, four dimensions, or however many you want. Just make your matrices bigger and do the exact same process. Now there's one more thing I want to talk about, which is you might have heard someone say that the number of columns of the matrix on the left has to equal the number of rows of the matrix on the right. Let's look at why that is. So when we talked about multiplying our matrix by a 2 by 1 matrix, which is the same as a vector, we were able to do this because this matrix has two columns and this matrix has two rows. But we weren't allowed to do our vector times the matrix on the right because this time we only have one column and two rows. So why are we not allowed to do this? Well, this 2 by 1 matrix, or vector, it has one column. And what that means is that it takes one input. We're only looking at the x input for this vector. But here we have a 2 by 2 matrix, and it has two rows, which means that it's giving two different outputs. It's giving an x output and a y output. So when we try to multiply these two together, this matrix is going to give a y output, and this vector is going to say, I don't know what to do with that. I don't have a y input to spit something out. So the reason that the number of columns here has to equal the number of rows on the right matrix is because the number of inputs that we're spitting into this matrix has to be the same as the number of inputs that it takes. So matrix multiplication is just looking at what are the inputs, what are the outputs, and I just have to look at the right numbers to see what output do I get for this input. Multiply them together, add them up, and that's all you have to do.